Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to continue with the Brick Stitch series we've been working on. So we've been having a lot of fun with that and I'm so glad you're enjoying those videos. So we have a couple of um, styles here that we had done before. Here are the the sunflowers earrings and this is the starlight. Here's the Nova earrings. We have many of others. I'm going to pull these out. Uh, I'll put a link to the, my Brick Stitch playlist up there and down there for you in case you would like to take a look at some of the earrings. But today we're going to concentrate on this circular brick stitch earring and I'm using the quick links again. So let me get these situated a little bit. So these, um, I'm using two different quick links here. We've got a 12 millimeter link and a 20 millimeter link. And what that's doing, so I have two links in one earring and what that does is it, it like it really keeps everybody tight and straight and it doesn't fall over, it doesn't cave in. Um, for those of you who are, you know, not super experienced at brick stitch or have, you know, are challenged a little bit with it like I am, this really keeps everything straight because brick stitch is really a balancing act, isn't it? You're balancing bead on bead. Even though you're, you're sewing it in, it's still sort of a balancing act. This makes it just a little bit easier. So I thought this would be fun to do. All right, so I'm going to clear the decks, get a materials list going, and we'll get started. Okay, let's get a materials list going. So you're going to need the Beadalon Click Quick Links, and you'll need a 12, 12 millimeter and a 20 millimeter. Now I'm going to put all um, sizes, colors, to every earring I showed you in the intro, everything down in the description box below the video. So don't forget to click the down arrow or the show more. I'll even put uh, I even put links to where you can purchase, you know, all these supplies. So the Beadalon um, Quick Links, in order for me to to bead them like this and have a link in the center, they have to be a certain size. So if you don't have the beetle on quick links and you have other other links or other you know circles, uh, rings, you can use them. You just have to kind of you know fit your beads in. So you'll just have to play with it to see how the fit works. So it, it could be fun just to do it with any rings that you have. But if you want this earring just like this, you'll need to get the quick links or a. 12 millimeter and a 20 millimeter and just make sure that it works as well as this one. Okay, we'll need an 110 seed bead. I'm using this 110 Toho Ico bead and this is, I'm using this instead of a Delica. So this is supposed to be a very um, precision cut um, cylinder bead. They're supposed to be very even and very um, beautiful and, you know, better than, I guess, you know, most um, cylinder beads. I have used them and they are really, really even and they're really consistent in size. They're a little more expensive than a Delica. I don't think it really makes a difference with this earring because we have the quick link that's going to go around the Delicas, but if you're doing something that you really need precision with, these are really nice beads. So you'll see as we go along, we'll take a look at it. So those are the Ico or the Delica, Delica beads, 11 O's. You need an 8 O seed bead. I'm using a two millimeter fire polish around the edge of this. Now this two millimeter fire polish is not a very consistently even bead, but it doesn't bother me because it's faceted and it gives that sort of, um, I don't know, frilly look on the outside or something. So that doesn't bother me at all. You can use any two millimeter, three millimeter, anything you like on the outside. I have a pair of ear wires. Um, it has a stop bead there. You probably don't need a stop bead. I have some 8-pound Fireline Black Satin. You can use a size 10 beading needle here. Don't forget to look down in the description box below the video for a coupon code 10% off for the Ringberries bead mat. This is the big bead mat that I use. And there is a link to Darlene's um, No More Oops bead tray in the description box below the video as well. All right, so um, gather up your materials and we'll get started. Let's get started. So thread your needle with about five feet of thread. You can put on a stop bead and leave about a, you know, or enough of a tail to sew in, maybe six inches. So we're going to pick up our ring. I'm going to pick up an 11 0 We're going to sew through the ring from back to front. I'm just going to hold it with my thumb and forefinger. And then, so here I've come back to front and then I'm just going to sew up the, the bead. And that's just going to place a loop around the ring. And at this point you don't really need the stop bead, but I'll just leave it there for the moment. Okay, pick up an 11 -0. sew through your ring, back to front, just hold it there with your, with your thumb and forefinger. And then up the ring, um, up the bead. 
do that one more time. Back to front. And up the bead. Just hold it with your finger so it doesn't move too much. And there, that's all you're going to do all the way around. It's just going to keep adding these, looping these um, beads around the ring. So get that done and then come on back a couple of beads before the end and I'll show you how to end it off. Okay, so I have a couple more beads to put on. That's how it looks so far. So I'm sewing through and up. I can fit one more. And you want to make sure that they're all right next to each other. You don't want them to bump into each other. So you have to determine like whether you need an, another bead at the end or not. That is just too small a space as far as I'm concerned. And you can also like you can maneuver them just a little bit so that you know that they um, move a little bit closer together. Alright, so here I'm coming out of this bead right here. I'm just going to sew through. That's the very first the very first bead I put on. I'm going to so back through the quick link, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to sew up through that same bead. So it's the bead that your, your um, tail thread is coming out of. And that's just going to connect those two beads together. So when I pull, I'm just going to turn it this way, like that, all my beads are nice and you know, secure and next to each other. And you, like I said, you can just, you can play with it a little bit. So for those of you who are not that familiar with this, I'm just going to let you get to this point and then we'll go on to the next row. Okay, so now we're going to start our next round. So I'm going to pick up two of these cylinder beads. And I'm going to just see if I can pull in a teeny bit more. So I'm... Just get myself situated here. So I'm exiting this bead here. I'm just going to sew through back to front through the thread bridge. That's that little thread between the beads. And then up the second bead I put on. That's going to place those two beads on. The first one's going to be wonky. We're going to connect that at the end. Pick up a cylinder bead. Sew through the next thread bridge. And then up through the bead. Okay, so when you're deciding where to put your next bead, sometimes you put you will put a bead through the same thread bridge that you put your previous bead through because there might be too big a space here. So when I look at this next thread bridge, it looks a little far for me to put a bead on. So I'm going to sew through that same thread bridge that I sewed through with the previous bead, and I'm going to place that bead right there, and that sits them together nicely. Now this is this is just a decision you're going to have to make and it takes some practice and some time um, and experience to do this. I still mess it up all the time and some of my beads look wonky but it's it would that your goal is to get them nice and straight and next to each other. So I'm just going to sew through the next th thread bridge on this one. Okay and then let's look at the next one. So this one I think I can sew through the next one as well. And, they, and they'll still be standing up pretty straight. Yeah, that looks good. So my next one I think is going to be too far. So I'm going to sew through Oops. the thread bridge that I sewed through previously and up to secure that bead. All right, so you're just going to do that all the way around. Just you know, be mindful when you're putting them on. Look at them. If they start to look a little wonky or they're bumping into each other, they're not straight, you want them nice and straight like little soldiers, um, then just take it out and you know choose a different thread bridge. You only have two choices, the, the one that you've previously gone through or the next one. So one of them is going to work. <laughs> All right, so get that done. Meet me back here a couple of beads before the end and we'll continue. Okay, let's get this last bead on. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is sew through the next one. So that's the very first one I put on. Up the previous bead that I was coming out of to connect it, to connect those two. I'm going to come down again. I like to reinforce this a little bit and then up the next bead. So that just gets me away from you know where I connected. And if you have a little space you can actually pull it a little bit. 
so that it's nice and even. Okay, so I'm just going to let you get to that point and then come back and we'll put the ring on. So let's let's play with the second ring. This is so cool. So I, I sewed in my tail. I just weave around a little bit. I don't put any knots. I won't put any knots on this uh, just because it was in the way. So that's why it's not there. So here I'm coming out of one of these Delica beads or Ico. I'm just going to put the ring on top like that. And the fit is just perfect. That's why I was saying using these the um, quick links is just is perfect. All right. So what we're going to do here is take two eightos. So I've popped it out just so you can see where I'm going. So I'm coming out of a delica, or this guy. I'm just going to sew through the thread bridge, the next thread bridge, and the ring, like that. Straighten these out a little and sew up the second bead I just put on. I'm just holding it with my thumb and forefinger right now. As I pull, you see how it, it the ring goes right into place. So this second bead is on, but this one is not. So we'll connect this at the end. Pick up an 8 -0. So back to front, through the thread bridge, through the ring, and up the bead. How easy is that, huh? Pick up an 8 -0 pick up a thread bridge, so I'm going back to front, picking up a thread bridge, going through, under the ring, back to front, popping that on. So that's how you're connecting everybody. Just feel through the back. You can even look if you like, and you don't have to worry too much about which thread bridge, as long as your beads look even, and um, you're getting through a thread bridge. Like here, I'm not through a thread bridge. You don't want that. You want to make sure you're you're sewing through one of the thread bridges because that way it's going to secure the ring and the 8 on. So just going to do that all the way around here. I'll do it one more time. So thread bridge, I feel I'm under the thread bridge right there. So through and up. All right, so do that all the way around. How easy is that and how cool is that? Um, and then meet me a couple beats before the end and we'll continue. Okay, coming down to the end. Let's get the last bead on. So now I'm going to connect the end. Whoops. So exiting here. So through this one. I'm going to go through the link and the thread bridge. So you feel it. You'll get under that thread bridge. Just want to make sure this is nice and secure. I'm just going to turn it around and go up the bead that's not connected. You can tell it's this one right here. It's that very first one we put on. And then I'm going to pull. And when I pull, it pulls them together so that, you know, if there's a little gap, you're not going to see it. All right, so that's, that's where we are. So I think we can continue at this point. So we're going to put on our the beads on the outside. So these are the two millimeters. So exiting here. So through your thread bridge, that next thread bridge, and up. The second bead. You got it. We're just going to do the same exact thing, choosing a thread bridge that you think is going to look the best. Just like that. Do a couple more. Mm, this one I think I'll go through the same thread bridge. And you know, take a look, see how it's looking. That looks pretty good. So then just continue all the way around. Meet me a couple of beads before the end, and then we'll finish it off and put the ear wire on. All right, seeing a few. Okay, we're back. So I think I could fit one more bead in here. This is a close one. But I think I'll fit. And if it bumps, then I'll take it out. Okay, that just fit in there perfectly. So I'm going to just do the same thing, so I'm exiting here. I'm just going to sew through that next 2 millimeter fire polish bead. Back up. Previous one. I'm going to go back down. This one. And up the next one, just to secure everybody, all the previous beads. And that's how it looks. You know, like I said, these beads are not the most even, but they're okay. You know, I think they look pretty. All right, so just get 
that ending done and then we'll come back and put the ear wire on. Okay, let's get the ear wire on. So here's my my ear, my lever back. I'm going to pick up a two millimeter and I didn't do, you know, have this in the materials list, but if you have a 15 you can put a little 15 here. You don't have to. And then another 15 and a two millimeter or just the two millimeter. It doesn't really matter. So here I'm coming out of this bead. I'm just going to sew down through the next fire polish bead. And when I pull, it puts the, the ear wire on like so. Just going to sew up through. Oh, I have one of my one of my two millimeter fire polish beads is not faceted, <laughs> but I'm just going to leave that. Okay, I'm just going to sew through all the beads again. This 15 doesn't necessarily have to be here. I just wanted to give it a try and see how that looked. And then down these two. Back up. You get the picture. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going, because I have to take it off, I'm just going to... Then you're going to just sew around the edge and, and uh, sew your threads in. All right, so here we'll take a quick look at, um, at them again. And I just wanted to mention about the... Which I can't find right now. The purple ones. I did a little bit of a... Oh, here they are. I did a little bit of a embellishment around the bottom of the purple one. I'm not going to do it here, but so easy. I just added a thread and I, you know, I just played with it until I came up with something that looked pretty around the edge. I didn't do the whole thing. I just did it around the edge. You can add little drops here. You can put on a smaller um, circular piece up at the top. I had one, but I... I must have put it away. You know, just use the 12 millimeter and go around it a couple of times or go around the inside of it. There's so many, you know, options and so many things that you can play with with this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have fun, as fun as much fun making these as I did making them because they are so much fun, easy to do, and fast. So, you know, you can just, you know, make, make a pair in like 15, 20 minutes and be out the door. All right. So thank you again for joining me. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button and, and give me a like or a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.